I want to continue this uh, series of talks on uh, loving kindness. Uh, tomorrow is the last talk on that. And um, today I want to uh, continue uh, the talking on the same topic. Uh, Yesterday I, I gave a series of uh, things to remember to overcome uh, anger which of course is a very uh, common thing, very difficult thing and that is why when we recommend some people to practice uh, uh, metta, uh, some people even get upset. Because some people have problems with their parents, they cannot share their loving, friendly thoughts with their parents. Some people have problems with their neighbors, with their teachers, with um, uh, friends, they are bosses in the workplaces, they are co-workers and so forth. Therefore, they harbor hatred, anger. And uh, when we try to suggest uh, them to practice uh, uh, loving friendliness, uh, it is very difficult for them. Because they always, when they try to practice uh, loving friendliness, anger uh, comes to them. They get upset. They remember all sort of uh, wrong things uh, they have done to them. Say sometimes uh, parents. Uh, children don't remember what parents have done when the pa babies are very tiny little. Uh, all they remember maybe what the parents have done when they were growing up, uh, asking, reprimanding them, asking them, don't do this. Don't go there. Don't speak like that. Don't sit like that. Uh, don't associate with, associate with so and so. Uh, don't bring such and such home. Uh, they impose a curfew on them. All these they remember. And therefore, they think uh, parents have uh, curbed their uh, freedom. Parents have uh, abused them, uh, but they don't realize how how much they have done when they were very tiny little uh, uh, babies. When they were born, they, they were they all were very much like a, just a piece of meat. <laughs> In fact, we could not do anything by ourselves when we were born. Without them, we would be completely dead. And that part we never remember. And of course, sometimes uh, some people have problems with uh, children. And uh, when we talk about parents, those who don't like children get upset. There are so many reasons for people to get upset, angry, when we talk about uh, living friendliness. And they even don't want to hear that. That is very unfortunate. And uh, someone who does not want to hear the talk on uh, living friendliness have very difficult life, very difficult mental states, and they have a lot of uh, uh, things to work out in order to make their life happy and peaceful. Because living friendliness is a wonderful thing that uh, uh, we all have to cultivate. When we cultivate that, our uh, resentment uh, definitely fades away. So, when anger arises, 
there is uh, there are several other things to do one is engaged in uh, some wholesome activity gardening or uh, taking care of uh, uh, an animal or feed an animal or help somebody who is uh, in need uh, of help uh, find hospice program uh, find some destitute uh, people uh, when you do work like that wholesome work with those people you naturally begin to develop pay uh, loving friendliness towards those people because when we work with them you can see their suffering you you appreciate your compassion you see how much compassion you have within yourself when you are engaged in uh, some such uh, wholesome activities that would uh, that would be healing for yourself uh, and that would be healing for others and thereby you cultivate this thought in your mind through your activities through your actions there are so many things in this world to do to uh, help others which uh, naturally uh, arouse our own inner wonderful noble quality of this living uh, friendliness walk on the street go to a shopping mall you can see so many very elderly people they hardly can carry their uh, grocery bag uh, they can of course see on the road so many everywhere every society we find uh, beings human being like that who needs help if we start if we do some work like that deliberately uh, your anger slowly fades away and you begin to appreciate life appreciate your life appreciate their life actually people who have tremendous hate in themselves cannot uh, exp- cannot uh, develop um, loving friendliness towards themselves or towards others so in order to overcome their own uh, hate and their anger they must do something very concrete and physical next thing i would suggest that one should do to overcome uh, anger is uh, not to associate with people who are very angry it's very uh, damaging to your own state of mind uh, if you can help them uh, through your practice of loving friendliness you help them otherwise don't try to associate with them try to avoid them as far as possible just like avoiding the the, the as i said the stick uh, uh, taken from the funeral pyre which has uh, both ends burnt and middle has dirt you cannot use it for anything just like that now sir these are whom buddha call uh, uh, fools who who are always very very angry nobody can associate with them buddha call them uh, uh, fools because they uh, harm themselves every time always they harm themselves within not only drinks and drugs and, uh, and things like that but in a hate all the always full of hate always see <laughs> i thought they were coming to get us <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was a airplane huh? yeah. okay <laughs> is it okay what happened i don't know i was <laughs> <laughs> 
this sound from the speaker who's in the microphone and he's back. Feedback. <laughs> I see. <laughs> anyway. Is that how our minds and bodies work when we get angry? <laughs> yes. Actually, this is very good example. <laughs> when uh, uh, you are full of hatred, full of anger, uh, it uh, feed back <laughs> and eat you up. It is unbearable. Unbearable to the person who is full of hatred and to the people around, just like this humming here. <laughs> very difficult, very difficult to associate with such people. And Buddha said that they are unwise or foolish because uh, they do they cause harm to themselves and cause cause harm to others, and they cause harm to both. Uh, when we say this, uh, sometimes people ask, uh, how about your compassion? Uh, when somebody is so full of hatred, you are so full of loving kindness, strange friendliness, uh, you should associate with him, help him. You know how much you can help. You burn out and you are not enlightened. Your capacity is not unlimited. You are human, you have your own limitations, your own weaknesses, your own, lim own limitations. When you hit the edge of your limitation, you yourself will get very nervous, very tensed, uptight, frigid, and you may be one like that, one like the other person, very upset. And there will be more problems, more fights. So, Buddha said, don't associate with them. And you remember in Mangala Sutta, not to associate with the fool is a blessing. Why? When you associate uh, with them, the, in the Buddha's uh, interpretation of fool, a uh, fool is one who uh, abuses his intelligence. So human beings are considered to be intelligent beings. And if one does not know, does not use one's intelligence to curb one's hatred, anger, things that hurt oneself, hurt others, what is the use of his intelligence? He may have a great book knowledge, great experience and uh, he cannot take care of his own negative emotion. Therefore his intelligence uh, he abuses, he does not use it properly. No matter how long you associate, how much you try to help him, he would not learn, he would not change. And therefore Buddha said, don't associate with him. By not associating with him, perhaps he may miss you. You, when you don't associate with him, then he begins to think, well, it is because of this anger of mine, I lost my friends. I lost my associates. I lost my job. Therefore, I must do something about it. So the person will learn. So not, in, not associating with such people is not something permanent, something temporary, until that person comes to senses and realizes and changes himself. Then you can start associating with them. So avoid them uh, for your own benefit, for the benefit of him and for the benefit of all. Next thing we should do also uh, when you are angry, always get angry, uh, 
instead of uh, blaming others, you ask yourself, why do I get angry? Normally people, uh, it is very easy for us to find faults in others to get angry. We may say, well, I didn't start it. So and so started it. And I was calm and peaceful. So and so is always a troublemaker. And therefore, I get upset. Or, you may get upset, get angry, uh, even if there is nobody else around you gets angry. For any tiny little thing you get upset. Uh, try to find out why you get angry. Maybe your health may not be good. Maybe you may have your uh, high blood pressure, your cholesterol, your sugar, your um, some uh, neurological problem. Check out. Perhaps you may have some personal problems. Or if everything else is okay and still you get angry, ask yourself, am I selfish? I get angry because everybody, everything wants to be done in such and such a way. If it doesn't happen that way, I get angry. Also, when we are selfish, that is how we think. Everything must be in our own, in my own way. Either my way or by way or highway. <laughs> There's no middle path, no compromise. And there are people like that. They are very selfish. They never want to listen to others. Never want to bargain, uh, compromise, discuss, come to a decision. Why? Because they are very, very selfish, very, very egotistic, very self-centered, ego boosters. They don't want to uh, live in harmony. So they get angry. They don't understand the meaning of loving friendship, loving friendliness. There always has to be some uh, middle ground in discussion. I, I may, if I think I am always right, you are always wrong, that means problem is not yours, problem is mine. So if I get angry because of that, I always must look at myself and ask myself, Am I selfish? Am I egocentric? How can other person always wrong? Other, other person can always be wrong. It is not possible. So, uh, try to find out your own selfishness. And if you see you are selfish, uh, egotistic, then uh, slowly if you cultivate learning friendliness, you can slowly uh, be able to reduce your selfishness and accommodate the other person's weaknesses. Other person may have a lot of weaknesses. Uh, perhaps you may have uh, uh, very special uh, skills, abilities, you know, gifted uh, certain uh, skills. Other person may not have all these things. And therefore, by getting upset, uh, angry, is not going to help anybody. So we have to look at our own state of mind. Next thing is, uh, also very important, when you get angry, these are all recommended in Buddhist uh, texts. Uh, I collected them from here and there. You don't find them in one place. But uh, it's a very important thing. All the Buddha's advices. Samma Vayama. Exercise. Good exercise. Do some exercise. Physical exercise. And mental exercise. Uh, 
actually when we do physical exercise it relax relaxes our body relaxes our mind and muscles are relaxed relaxed uh, circulation becomes very good uh, that uh, very uh, tensed uptight uh, situation fades away and if you do it every day as a habit if you get angry if you do it every day that also helps us to overcome our anger the mental exercise uh, mental exercise uh, uh, is called we call it right effort uh, it it sounds very technical very abstract uh, when you just read the book read the the eightfold in the eightfold path it sounds very abstract but they are very practical daily instructions we must think uh, every day if i if we if i get angry every day i must think as soon as i wake up in the morning i must think i today i must make every possible effort not to get angry on any situation situation may arise today things can arise today there may be conversations there may be people there may be situation there may be events something can happen today but today i am not going to get angry you don't know so many unexpected things can come up which can uh, make you angry so if we commit that made that determination at the in the morning for not to get angry that particular day perhaps first day it may not work first hour it may not work second third hour may not work but if you keep remember reminding yourself well i made that commitment this morning you know morning early morning commitment is very good because uh, what you do in the early morning you remember because mind is very fresh first day you may not remember second third fourth day if you made the same commitment every morning then uh, as day day uh, grows grows increases you recall your commitment that you made this morning that morning not to get angry and when situation arises it may anger may starts as a habit then you remember your commitment because you made the determination and then anger will not arise but as a habit in spite of your sincere wish commitment as a habit it because in the past, for the past 20 30 40 years you allowed it to happen and you did not uh, take care of it now when you are 50 you start it or you are 40 or 30 you started it and therefore it is not very easy and therefore it can arise in spite of your, your wish anger can arise at that moment you remind yourself well i should not get angry this morning i made a commitment so this is how you overcome the anger that is already arisen that is another mental exercise which we call right uh, effort and when you when you establish these two states in your mind then you begin to see ah it's wonderful it is wonderful i am a different person now i am changing i can handle my anger not because of anything else but because of my own commitment you begin to congratulate yourself and then you develop this thought again and again and again and again that is the that is what is called the the 
er, no, you arouse this thought again and again and again during the daytime that uh, you are a different person, that uh, you are not getting upset, not getting angry, not doing anything hurt to hurt others, not say anything insulting things to hurt others out of anger. And therefore, this is what I want to cultivate. That is the last four, uh, uh, what you call step of your right uh, exercise. Why am I? Actually, although we, we translate that into English as uh, effort, uh, vayama in Sanskrit, vyayama. Vyayama means exercise. Even in uh, schools in uh, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, in schools there is a period, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, PT, uh, physical <coughs> exercise period. In Sinhalese, it is called vyayama. I think in India also, the schools, they call it Vyayama. Vyayama is Sanskrit word. Vyayama is Pali word, which means exercise. We make mental exercise in order to uh, overcome our anger, hatred, or uh, our resentment and so forth as it arises. After all, we all must remember the whole purpose of doing this is to make ourselves calm, peaceful, and make our mind healthy, body healthy, our surrounding healthy, associates, for associates to feel comfortable to associate with us, and to, for us to feel comfortable to associate with others, and to carry on our activities harmoniously, live together with others harmoniously. And therefore, we have to make the groundwork, prepare ourselves to practice loving friendliness. Loving friendliness practice is not very easy, very difficult thing. So this is, this is another thing we have to do. Mental and physical, physical exercise helps our muscles to relax, circulation, blood circulation to go very smoothly, and mental exercise is to take care of our mental states, our nerves, nervous system, our way of thinking, our attitude, our behavior, our way of thinking, all this. Next thing we have to do is to find somebody, a good friend. When you are getting angry very often, you must realize, I think I must consult somebody. You tell your problems uh, with, to, a, some, to a friend and discuss with that friend. That friend, also a friend uh, of uh, noble qualities, good qualities. Meaning, uh, when you go and complain to somebody about somebody's problem, that because of that somebody's problems you get angry again and again and again, the other problem would, uh, other friend of yours, would not uh, encourage you to blame that person if he's a good friend. He would say something to calm yourself. Well, perhaps uh, that person also may have his own problems. So we have to try to practice compassion towards him, loving kindness towards him. Because there has to be some other uh, things for that person to say something, do something like that. So the other person should be able to give you good advice in order to calm yourself. So the second, third, fourth time, if you come across similar problems with regard to, in relation to the other person, you will remember the advice your friend gave you. So you learn to overcome your disappointment, anger and so forth with other people. So, and also a good friend Will, with warm heart will advise you, please, if you get angry like this always, you are going to hurt yourself. You are going to hurt your mind, your own peace. And therefore, don't get angry. And he would give you advices how to deal with the situation depending on whatever complaint you have. 
So the good friend is always should be at hand to consult. Go to that person and tell that person your problems. As Buddha said in a spiritual training, good friend is a wonderful person. Good friend is a, is a one uh, that we have to have at hand all the time. I think uh, we have mentioned many times in the past, once when the Balananda went to the Buddha and said, uh, Venerable Sir, 50% of uh, spiritual life depends on a good friend. Buddha said, no, 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 don't say Ananda. Spiritual life depends on a good friend. And good friend has a compassionate heart, loving heart, is wise, well read, understanding, and uh, he is listening, and he's he is talking. He is listening to any kind of talk, uh, any kind of speech you make. He will listen. He is a he is a good listener. You know, many people we cannot talk with them. They are they are they are dominate the com- conversation. And they are the speakers, you are listeners, you go to tell your problems and the other one, instead of listening to your problem, that person would start giving you a long sermon. That is not the attitude of a good friend. Good friend, when you go to a good friend, good friend should understand that you went to him or her to pour out your problems. So the good friend should have enough sufficient patience to listen to you until until you finish everything you have to say. Then you feel relief in your heart because you have some to dump all your problems. He is a dumpster, good friend. <laughs> he will absorb everything and he will release it by himself. Uh, later on, but at that moment, out of compassion, he would listen to your problem. And also, a good friend will not mislead you. Good friend always give you right direction, a proper advice, without with compassion and loving thoughts in his mind. So, Buddha said, associate with the good friend. And then, next thing one should do is, uh, all these are very, very important, is uh, listen to a Dhamma talk. Uh, These days you can listen to Dhamma talk, go to internet, open internet. You can get many beautiful Dhamma articles. Listen to tapes. There are some hundreds of good Dhamma tapes available. Take a book, good Dhamma book, and read. Uh, even it even it may not be uh, pertaining to anger, but uh, it will explain Dhamma. So when you listen to Dhamma or read Dhamma book, Dhamma articles, or Dhamma tapes, and so forth. That moment, anything Dhamma, anything devotional, it doesn't necessarily have to be one particular thing, anything devotional, uh, devotional songs, uh, perhaps very beautiful, soothing, comforting music. Uh, there are many beautiful music. You know, in uh, uh, not listening to music is uh, one of the precepts in uh, my eight precepts. But that uh, doesn't mean uh, not listening to anything, any sound, any any uh, songs. Uh, that simply means uh, not listening to those uh, uh, vulgar music. Uh, even in the Buddha, uh, uh, even Buddha has recommended the uh, uh, chanting. Chanting. Although in some place in Anguttarika there is a place where uh, 
there are five uh, uh, disadvantages of uh, uh, giving sermons in, uh, in, in poems, in poetry, uh, that has a different effect. But uh, chanting, what is to be chanted? There are certain things. Sutta um, Gaya. There are nine uh, limbs of Buddha's teaching. Sutta Gaya, Vayakarna, Gatha, Iti Uttaka, Nidana, Abhuddha, Vedala, uh, Jataka, and so forth. Uh, these are called nine. Uh, limbs of Buddha's teaching. Uh, Gatha and uh, Gaya. Gaya means that which is to be sung. That which is to be sung. And Gatha is one of them. If you listen to a, a sound of a, a Dhamma, anything uh, which soothes you comfort you. Uh, your anger will go away. Uh, if you listen to a, there is a very famous uh, saying in uh, uh, Sinhalese literature uh, explaining this. It says uh, Dahamata Sari Kota Kehi Tereki Kaviata Sita Pahada Sita Nisaki Sikota Kanda Pili Vela Dosu Noyeki Nivanata Sapa Mini Sangha Sata Namaki A group of monks was, were traveling in a forest and they heard a um, sound of a song sung by a woman. Normally, when you hear a song sung by a woman, uh, they heard the voice of a woman. Only then they, they stopped and began to listen to the sound because it is so very sweet coming through the forest, through the trees and leaves and so forth in the very still dark uh, forest. Very soothing voice coming. They listen. And then, at first they could not hear the, they could not understand the words. When you sing songs, you cannot understand words first. But when you listen very carefully for a while, then you begin to understand the words. So these monks listened to the words. And then began to ponder over the meaning of each word. And these songs were uh, sung, uh, they, they, they were composed on Dhamma. And therefore they con contemplate on the meaning of these words and then by listening, it is said that they attain uh, stages of enlightenment. This is of course one of the things that Buddha has mentioned also. Uh, listening to uh, uh, Dhamma uh, is one of the two factors of attaining the first stage of sainthood. Uh, one is uh, called Parato Gosapatya, the other is uh, mindful reflection, Yonsu Manusika. So they listen with mindful reflection and attain the stage of enlightenment, first stage. So, therefore sometimes songs, when you are angry, when you are upset, listen to a very meaningful, calm, soothing uh, chanting or uh, music and so forth. Then, next thing you should do, investigate the Dhamma. Take a very profound, deep piece of Dhamma, a sutra, a book, explaining certain very deep things. 
and reflect. Get yourself engaged to get out of that, to divert your mind from angry uh, state to another state. Uh, give the mind to reflect on something other than uh, anger and so forth. Then uh, find out a reasons uh, to develop loving kindness towards the person you have problems with. Reasons. Suppose you find a person who is uh, whose uh, words are rotten. I mean, the person speaks very bad words, bad language. Does not know how to speak. No polite word. Very cursing. Very. Uh, hurting, uh, insulting words, person may say. But the action, that person does something very nice. Uh, the person may come and uh, suppose you are doing something, you, are, you cannot do it properly, the person will come and mm, say naturally, you fool, you idiot, you don't know how to do this and so forth. But having said that, he will do the job for you. <laughs> so, uh, that may be, that is good reason for you to develop loving friendliness towards that person. <coughs> Such person is compared to a dirty rag you found on the road. Suppose a monk is uh, traveling and he will see a dirty rag on the road. It is so dirty, it, 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 he cannot even pick it up by his hands. He would uh, hold it by one foot and kick with the other foot to dust it out, clean it up. <laughs> and then uh, pick with two fingers and shake it, you know, with uh, sort of disappointment, contempt and so forth. And then he takes home and wash it neatly and then start using it to make a probe or even a doormat or something. But he puts that piece of clothes to work. Similarly, when we want to cultivate learning friendship, even uh, that person, we have to find out, well, in spite of all that person's filthy language, that person does something wonderful. For that, I must respect him, admire him, and I must share my loving friendship with that person, loving friendliness with that person, and let him change his way of talking. When I associate with him, when I show my loving friendship, he will change. So that there you arouse loving friendship with friendliness within yourself for, for that person. Secondly, you find another person also uh, words are bad but the deeds are good but from time to time his heart's open to loving kindness, friendship, and uh, appreciative joy, and so forth. In spite of his bad words, uh, good deeds, his heart will open to you. And then you practice loving kindness towards the person, in spite of all his weaknesses. That person is compared to a uh, pond with uh, covered with moss. You, when you want to dive or get into that water, you by hand, you know, you move, remove the moss and dive in it uh, and uh, bathe or swim or whatever. Uh, similarly, 
uh, mentally you learn to ignore the person's uh, superficial weaknesses and try to find out the the fact that his heart opens to compassion and loving friendship from time to time he will develop pure heart from time to time that is a reason for you to develop your loving friendliness towards that person the third person may have a uh, uh, very bad words and uh, bad uh, deeds and uh, uh his both bad thoughts uh, deeds were bad and his mouth is bad always he speaks badly but still he has from time to time he opens his heart for noble things friendly things compassionate things pure heart from time to time occasionally that person is like a puddle on the road suppose you are uh, it's a very beautiful simile to remember suppose you are walking in a on a road where there is no water no well you are thirsty tired hungry and uh, you are desperate you need some water you are almost dehydrated at that time you find a uh, a uh, little water on a cow's uh, footprint you know you do it is not too much water but cow's foot, foot, foot footprint also is not too deep but there is water if you try to if you try to take that water by hand you make it muddy because water is not very deep so what you do you bend down kneel down and uh, you with your mouth you slowly bring your mouth close to that uh, little water and sip it from there without disturbing the mud so you can quench your thirst in spite of it is dirty or everything allowed but the water remains little clear not too much but that's enough to quench your thirst since you are so desperate for water similarly find in even in that person some reason for you to cultivate loving friendship towards him although that person's bad, mouth is very bad deeds are very bad since he also occasionally has little opening to uh, purity uh, compassion loving kindness and so forth use that just like you use this water although everything around is dirty you use that little water to sit to get your thirst out you meet another person fourth person that person's uh, words are bad behavior is bad and heart also does not open at all for anything noble so that person you find like a patient sick man walking on a road again where there is no hospital no village no human beings around this person is afflicted and suffering by severe sickness and uh, he really needs uh, attention medicine to take care of otherwise uh, he would die and you see him and you will feel very sorry for him your heart melts you think ah how can i help this man he needs water he needs medicine he needs clothes he needs somebody to help him how can i help him 
so you would uh, volunteer to help that person in spite of all these difficulties around there's no water no other human being but you come up to help him similarly buddha said when somebody is uh, completely negative in thoughts in words in deeds totally negative and still we have to find the reason to develop thought of friendliness compassion loving kindness fifth person his thoughts are sweet and wonderful his words are beautiful friendly his deeds are friendly beautiful pure everything is ideal and it is very easy for us to cultivate loving kindness towards that person so put this it put all these five people together and try to cultivate loving kindness equally to all of them without any discrimination so it is not very easy we have to make a great sacrifice to practice loving friendship friendliness not very easy sacrifice of our comfort sacrifice of our thoughts sacrifice of our feelings uh, our attitude our behavior our habits so many things we have to sacrifice in order to cultivate loving friendliness not very easy so uh i have two little stories to conclude the talk uh one story i think probably you have heard it's a beautiful story about uh, shanti deva uh shanti deva was practicing loving friendliness metta and he was practicing 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 he wanted to see maitre buddha maitre buddha is the buddha uh, who is uh, who represents metta living friendship living kindness and he wanted to see him of course maitre buddha is in is coming in future how can he see him now but he wanted to see maitre buddha's image somehow that what he called his uh, vision apparition doesn't matter how far into the future he might come but he wanted to see at that time in his life so you know he thought in order to see him all he has to do is to practice loving kindness he was practicing 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 one day when he was walking he saw a dog by a road side and this dog was wounded and uh, weak very dirty ugly looking the maggots were jumping out of the wound and so smelly so he thought ah this is the chance for me to practice now i want to help this dog uh i want to remove these worms the big you know worms jumping out of his wounds so he thought uh, if i uh take this uh, worms uh, with the stick i will hurt worms because the stick is very 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 stiff and even if i take it with the stick where to put him if i put him on the ground he will dry or other bird or some predator will come and eat him up so i cannot put him on the ground i cannot take it with my fingers 
My fingers are too tough. The worms are so delicate. And I might hurt the worms as well as the wound on the door. Then he thought, uh, I have an idea. He thought these worms need meat. So he uh, cut a piece of wood from his own leg and put one side and uh, took this to take these worms out of the wound. He knelt down, he thought, taking with the, putting his tongue out and taking the <laughs> worms one by one and put on the piece of wood, meat so that the worms will not be hurt. <laughs> and there is a place for worms to stay. And dog will be cured. <laughs> With this thought, he bent down and stretched his tongue out to take the worms out. That instant, he saw the Buddha, Maitre Buddha's picture, statue. <laughs> and then, <laughs> the dog disappeared, worms disappeared, and even his wound was healed. And uh, then he said, this is it. I completed my practice of loving kindness. You see? I think it is, a, it is a very beautiful story. <laughs> so, so see to, to what extent, to what extent somebody cultivated to make it real. Uh, the other story is uh, uh, what do you call. Uh, Sanat Kumar story. Uh, uh, he went to see the Buddha with uh, with his son, with his baby boy. He said he was a prince, uh, but he was babysitting that day. <laughs> so he took his baby with him uh, and went to see the Buddha. And he asked the Buddha. Uh, sir, uh, do you say sometimes uh, some harsh words uh, to hurt people? Then Buddha said, uh, uh, my dear prince, uh, uh, the question cannot be answered uh, one-sidedly. It has to be answered in a more broad way. If the uh, speech is uh, right, unpleasant, hurt somebody, I would not say that. If the speech is wrong, hurt somebody, I would not say that. If the speech is uh, uh, wrong, pleasing to people, I don't say that. If the speech is uh, uh, not uh, uh, pleasing but rough and uh, hurting and still even if it is uh, uh, right I wait for that. <clears throat> if the speech is right, sweet, moment is right, I will say that. Okay, then uh, he asked, uh, is it true Venerable Sir that you said uh, Mm. that uh, uh, Devadatta, Devadatta, uh, when he wanted to see you, you said uh, he cannot see me. But Devadatta was going to die and he was so desperate he wanted to come and see uh, Buddha and uh, uh, apologize to the Buddha before he died. So he was coming <clears throat> and uh, when the Buddha was informed that Devadatta was coming to see the Buddha, Buddha said, he cannot see me. 
So it sounds very cruel. But what Buddha meant was, uh, Buddha knew that you cannot see him because, because before he came to see him, he would die on the road. Buddha knew that. That is why he said, no, he cannot see me. So this prince asked the Buddha, is it not uh, uh, cruel? Buddha said, no. Is it not, sir, sometimes you said to monks uh, very harsh words, uh, sort of uh, saying foolish man or Moga Purusha and so forth? Then Buddha said, uh, okay, now you have a little baby sitting on your lap. Now this li little child uh, gets up and crawls and put a piece of uh, wood into his mouth. What would you do? He said, I'll take it out. If I cannot take it out uh, easily, I uh, ask somebody else to hold his head and I hold his hands with my left hands, I th hold his both hands tight and put, make my uh, you know, index finger, you know, crooked, and put into his mouth and pull the 